Welcome to worship with Seventh and James Baptist Church. In the season of Lent, as we focus on the fruits of the Spirit, this week's fruit is peace. So much of this season, we see a light at the end of the tunnel. We anticipate with joy the time when we can gather again, when the restrictions of the past year are lifted, and we return to some sense of normalcy. And yet, in the midst of all of that, new anxieties arise. Will we see the people that we expect to see? Will we be able to gather with them again? Will they rejoin us in this space? Will they be comfortable doing so? How will we take part in activities with each other? What will linger for months, if not years, to come? So, in this season, we hope for peace and security and trust that all things will be as they need to be. Let us remember the promise, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. Let us worship together. Holy God, we come together before you today, scattered in our homes across the city and across the country, but nevertheless, we gather together. We thank you for the constant mercies in our lives, even in the midst of hardship, for a community whose members check on each other during lockdowns and storms, for the creative ways people have found to be church. We thank you for the moments of joy, the strains of a beautiful song and unexpected sunset. We thank you for the harbingers of spring that we are beginning to see, blue bonnets on the banks of highways, hordes of robins bobbing across our yards, budding trees. 
We thank you for the harbingers of hope in the midst of a chaotic world. The news of one more friend getting their COVID vaccine, the small but really huge kindnesses we see every day. We have so much to be grateful for. Help us to remember this. Help us to keep our minds centered on hope. Renew our weary spirits. Give us the peace in our hearts that only you can give and make us instruments in all of our various ways of your peace in the world. In the name of the Prince of Peace, amen. Today's investment reading is Jeremiah 31, verses 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the one that I made with their ancestors when I took them out by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall I teach one another, or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their in iniquity, and remember their sin no more. Our epistle reading this morning is Hebrews 5, 5 to 10. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplication with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Our gospel reading for today comes to us from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 20 through 33. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and they said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow, and where I am, there will be my servant also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now, my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven and said, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said, It was thunder. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now it is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from heaven, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. We give thanks for you and your love, O Lord. Your love which breathed this world into being, established a covenant people, brought them out of captivity and into a promised land. Your love, which from the moment of our birth has known and called us by name, 
out from this world's bondage into your kingdom. Your love poured out into the heart of Jesus, who endured the nails of our sin, defeated death to rise again, and causes our hearts to sing hallelujah. Sovereign Lord, we pray that your hand touch the dry bones of our faith. Your word breathe new life where there has been death. Your spirit raise us up from where we lie. Your love bringing us home and to the cross of Christ. And we pray the prayer that Christ has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I've been thinking this week about our Old Testament reading from the book of Jeremiah. In our reading, God makes a covenant or a promise to be our God and to forgive us when we don't make good choices. God promises to be our God and that we will be God's people always. I have some pictures to help us think about these things together. Together, we are God's people and God will be our God always. When we make mistakes and we fight with our friends, we say things we don't mean and we ignore people we don't like, we don't always share what we have. But together, we are God's people, and God will be our God always. We work together and we help one another. We forgive one another and we care for one another. We keep trying to be the people God is calling us to be. Because together, we are God's people, and God will be our God always. We won't always make the right choice. We won't always know what to do or the right thing to say. But we keep trying to be the people God is calling us to be. Because together we are God's people, and God will be our God always. What a wonderful gift. Let's say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for being our God always. Amen. Please join us in the responsive reading of Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. 